Hello and welcome to this DDD tutorial. This is the third section of this course, so you came a long way. Congratulations on that. This also means that in previous section you learned how to implement model and how to use entity framework. In this section we are going to implement second part of the MVC application, controllers. We are going to build two types of controllers. The first one is RESTful API controller which will expose API through which we will be able to access our data. Second one will be a bit more complex. We will build MVC controller, which will return view operations and more operations than the former one. So let's start from the first video of this section and build RESTful API controller. In this video we will learn what is RESTful API, and then we will implement this kind of API for audiobooks in our system. So, let's first see what is RESTful API. Representational stage transfer or REST is an architectural style that defines a set of constraints and properties based on HTTP. And to put it in most plainful way, a RESTful API is an application program interface that uses HTTP requests to get, put, post, and delete data. Of course, there is more than it meets the eye, and we can go to extent to say that building this kind of API in a proper way is a half art, half science. Another thing that we need to notice here is that this is an architectural style, not the product, and that is something that a lot of people got confused with. In general, the REST architectural style describes six constraints. These constraints, applied to the architecture, were originally communicated by Roy Fielding in his doctoral dissertation. These six constraints goes like this. This should simplify and decouple the architecture and enable each part of the application to evolve independently. The four sub-constraints of this uniform interface constraint are resource identification in requests, resource manipulation through representation, self-descriptive messages, and hypermedia as the engine of application state. Client-service architecture, everyone knows how this architecture works. The principle of this constraint basically to get to the separation of concerns. This enables us to use the same user interface across multiple platforms. Statelessness, this is a constraint that describes that each request that comes from any client contains all the necessary information. Basically, session state is held only on the client. There is no client context being stored on a service between the requests. Cacheability or cacheable. This constraint is a bit weird constraint since clients can cache responses. Their responses must define themselves as cacheable or not. So they can prevent clients from reusing stale or inappropriate data in response to further requests. RESTful API should be a layer system. We can have layers of servers and clients, and basically the client could not tell if they are communicating with the end server or intermediary. Code on demand, this is an optional constraint, and uh, this means that servers can temporarily extend or customize the functionality of the client by transferring executable code. Once again, topic of RESTful API is too big to fit these few minutes that we are having here, so it is suggested to read some of the many good books on RESTful APIs out there after watching this course. That being said, we have more than enough information to implement our own first RESTful controller. So let's check out what we will implement. First, we will see how we extended audiobook service uh, even more, that is something we started in the previous section. Apart from the get all function that we already implemented, we will implement the REST CRUD operations, and we will see how we, we've done that. And then we will implement Audiobooks API controller, or to be more precise, we will implement methods that will handle get, post, put, and delete HTTP requests for audiobooks. And we will do all this using TDD, of course. Basically, this is how our application will look like. We will write our controller that will communicate with our database access layer. Our case, that is audiobook service, which is wrapping up the entity framework. 
controller will get the model from the service and serialize it into HTTP response. We'll have handle these HTTP requests on these routes. Basically, routes are defined automatically in ASP.NET by naming the controller. And you'll see that this audiobooks API part of uh, that's part of every route. That is essentially the same name of the controller minus the word controller. Okay, let's first check extended implementation of audiobook service. Here in interface iAudiobook service, I first added some methods getByID, which will return an audiobook using which has this ID, then add method, which will add this past add audiobook, update method that will update audiobook with this ID using data from this object, and finally delete method, which will delete the audiobook with this ID. Here is the implementation in the audiobook service. This part you are already familiar with from the previous section. Here is the get all method. And then there are the rest of the methods that I've just mentioned. Here is get by ID method, which, as you can imagine, returns an audiobook with this ID. Here is the add method, which is adding this audiobook that is passed in this method. And as you can see, we are always creating a new GUID for every audiobook. Update method is pretty similar. We are just having some checks for IDs all right before proceeding with anything. And finally, this delete check this past ID is all right first. And if so, it, return, it deletes audiobook from the database. All right, so let's add our audiobook. API controller. Before that, we will of course add tests. So here is the test class. I already added it in digital library unit test. It's called audiobook API controller test. This means that our controller will have this name, audiobook API controller. And basically, what I will start writing now are tests. We should cover get all method. I'll start from that. And basically, our audiobook API controller should return HTTP requests with all audiobooks in our database. So let's add some tests for this. Okay, I've added two tests. Of course, build is failing because I still haven't had audiobook API controller class. But in this first test, what I'm checking is basically is when I call audiobook API controller get method, will get all method from this audiobook service mock object will be called and in a second one okay I'm, I'm doing this from the beginning okay so i've added one unit test this one is called get all no condition returns all audiobooks basically what am i checking in this test is that audiobook api controller when we call get method of this controller get all method audiobook service mock object will be called as you can see, our build is failing because audiobook API controller is not defined yet. So let's do that. I will go to controllers and add new item. And I will say API controller class. Of course, I will call it audiobook API controller. All right, here it is. As you can see, there are already some default implementation in here which will we will modify everything pretty much yeah so let's just clean this a bit turn these comments so they don't fuse you okay let's implement part by part all right now the get method as you can see it returns ironable string we will want here to return audiobooks use this model and you can see that we cannot call service here because it needs to be a field or a property in this audiobook api controller so let's do that and implement get method okay here it is i've added iaudiobook service field initialize it through the constructor 
and finally use it here in this get method. Basically, I just called get old method from the audiobook service. Let's build this and see what will happen. Of course, we are having our test here, which will still not build because I didn't use this namespace. Save it, build again. Okay, now it passes. And let's run our test if it's any good. All right, cool. We just implemented first method in our audiobook API controller. Let's continue with the rest. Now I want to add the method, basically, which will return something like this. As you can see, we are already having get integer of ID. Of course, we need to change all of this. But basically, what, uh, this method should call get by ID method of audiobook server. So how tests for that will look like? All right, added two tests. First one is get ID path return property audiobook. So in here we will check if a good ID will be called. Let me just see what's happening with this. Oh yeah, we are still haven't implemented proper get method. Okay, so this first one will check if when we pass some ID and we have it in our database, this controller will return correct audiobook. And the second one is checking the second condition, basically when we don't have an audiobook with a past ID in the database. So here are the tests. They are not building, of course, because our get method is crooked. As you can see, it receives int. So I will say it returns audiobook. And I will say I will pass GUID. You have to use the system. Build it. Let's say it returns just a null for, a, for initial implementation. So we can see that our test will fail. We're building it. Let's implement our get method correctly. So our get method should return i action result here. So by pass GUID, I will return null so we can see that our tests are failing. Give it a second. Everything is builded. So let's run our two tests that we just added. Because I returned null here, of course, our test failed. So let's replace this with audiobook service dot get by id and then pass that id here okay okay here is our implementation of get method in here we called audiobook service get by id return that item and then we are checking if it's null if it's not null we are returning that as object result otherwise we are returning not found HTTP response. So let's build this now and run our tests again. If we run tests, we will see that they are passing. That's awesome. Let's go on to the next function, which is a post function. Of course, the signature is wrong completely, so we will have to change that as well. But let's first write the tests for post method. This post method will have to create a new audiobook in our database. So it will call this add method from the audiobook service eventually. All right, let's add some tests. Okay, I've added a couple of tests. And the first one, uh, as you can see, I'm creating it for our create method of the API controller, which is not existing yet. So this effectively is not going to build. So in here I added, of course, audiobook service mock. And in this test, what we are testing is that correct function add has been called and that the ret return result is okay. And in this one, we are checking that if you call create with a null, it will return bad request result. So let's implement our post method, which will be called create.
Okay, I've just replaced that code with this. With what we are checking if past value here is null, we will return bad request. Otherwise, we will try to call audiobook service add method. If we catch any exception, we will just uh, write it down and uh, retrow it again. And uh, eventually, we will return an uh, OK response. All right, so let's run our tests. Awesome, all our tests passed. Let's proceed with put function. The put function will need to update our audiobooks. The signature is again wrong. So we'll just repeat the whole process once again. We will first add some tests. Okay, again, I added two tests. First one is checking if uh, when null is passed that we are returning bad request. And the other one is checking if exception is shown, basically that we are returning not found a result. Then we are checking if we pass correct audiobook that it will be the correct methods will be called and the OK result will be returned. And if wrong ID is also passed, we'll check that we get bad request. So let's implement our update function. It is the biggest one yet. So let's see how it looks like. Okay, here it is. First, we will check if the null is passed or if ID is not correct and we are returning bad request. Otherwise, we are trying to call update function of audiobook service. And if some exception is shown, we are just returning not found. Otherwise, we are returning OK. So let's build this. Now our code can build. And let's run the tests. OK. They all passed. That is cool. We came to an end. Basically, what we need to implement is just the delete method. So we will go to the tests, repeat the process, add some successful use cases, some unsuccessful, and see what will, will happen there. I've added two methods. The first one is checking if correct ID is passed, and that we get the result that we get OK result and it's verifying the proper method called. The other one is checking if bad ID is passed that we got not found result turn. So let's jump to the implementation of this method. Here it is. We are just trying to call this audiobook service delete method. If the exception is shown, we are saying it's not found. Otherwise, we are turning OK HTTP response. And if we run this, we will see that all our tests passed. 